Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another Average Fisherman video. And today, we're gonna be breaking down how to go out and catch the biggest bass of your life during the summertime, and we're gonna talk about offshore fishing. So without further ado, we're gonna dive into today's video. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be breaking how to fish offshore and locate bass and how to catch true giants and even your personal best. And this is gonna be a three part, maybe even a four part series. There's just too much to talk about in one video. So this today, we're gonna to be covering if you have side imaging, if you have a 360, if you have live scope, that's what we're gonna be covering today and how to utilize your map chips. So, on part three most likely is going to talk about how to locate and fish if you don't have any graphs. Yes, you can. Everybody is so wrapped up on, I must have 360, I must have live scope. But back when I was younger, there was no such thing. So, today we're diving in how to do that stuff with the technology. And if you all could right now, if you guys are watching this and you find this super helpful and you're getting value out of my videos, please hit subscribe and turn on the notifications. It's that little bell you see. That way, when I put out all the latest and greatest on tips, advice, and how to go out and be successful in bass fishing, you guys can catch all the latest content. I never realized until I started doing this myself how important it is to have subscribers and how important it is just to hit like on that video. I still work a regular job every day. As you can see, I'm not in a mansion. I don't have a $50 million house. I don't have a $10,000 streaming setup. So I'm doing the best I can. So please, your support goes a long ways, and I thank you so much. So let's dive into today's subject with electronics. The first thing that we're going to talk about is whether you have a hummingbird, you have Lawrence, you have um, Garmin. Each one has its own personal preferences and just my opinion. Would Whatever you like better, go with it, okay? We're going to dive into graph settings on a totally separate, separate subject in another future video. So make sure you've got those notifications on. When I do a graph, how to dial in your graphs? How do we, how do we, how do we locate this using our graphs? Uh, using utilizing our graph settings. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how do you locate good offshore spots utilizing two things? Okay, first and foremost, old school, and we'll we'll talk about that in the third video is having a lake map, a hard paper map. You can open it up. You can look at everywhere on the lake. It gives you hot spots. You know what's most popular it gives you um you know areas for boat launching it gives you areas that um you can run safely and not so safely now it doesn't give you boating lanes unless it's a lake that is buoyed like toledo bend or like fork or uh you know some of your other river systems out there but first and foremost is a hard map utilizing a hard map to understand how to start going and not waste your time in areas that won't be successful. The next thing, and then first and foremost, and this is the most important one, everybody has a smartphone these days. Everybody has access to technology, the internet, it seems like. So you can go to navionics.com and pull up their free chart viewer. You just go to Navionics, click on you know chart viewer, and it will, you can go to any lake in the country for free and do map reconnaissance on the areas that you could potentially be catching giants offshore. So that's the second method, okay? The third method, if you're out there setting in your garage, if you're out there setting under your carport or wherever your boat is, okay, it is very important. If you've got the money to go ahead and spend on it, buy yourself a Lake Master Chip from Hummingbird if you have Hummingbird units, or you can buy the Navionics map cards. They're, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. 
to um, each brand. Navionics utilizes a little more visual cues whenever you have like a channel or you know you have an old bridge. It's a little more visible, I would say. It's a little easier to read on Navionics. Lake Master Chips from Hummingbird, they are specifically designed to work with the Hummingbird units. So you can't go buy a Hummingbird Lake Master Chip and go put it in a Lowrance. It's not going to work. Navionics chips, you can buy them. They will work for your Hummingbird and they will look for, work for your Lowrance. Garmin. Garmin sells specific map packs that are super easy to download straight to your graph. So they have different type of map packs you can buy for your lake in order to see the topo map that we're about to dive into. So those are the three map cards that I highly recommend that you get. And if you can't afford to get a map card and you just have the graphs available, that's fine. Every graph has base maps and it's still going to help you utilize what you need to get to get offshore. The advantages of having a, a, a Lake Master chip or some kind of map card is they give you by the foot your, your um, topo map. It gives you the drop-offs and your ley lines and everything by the foot. So if you have a very subtle change from one foot to like a two-foot drop, it's going to show it. It's going to show a little more breaks. It's going to show more channel swings, okay? So if you can, get a, get, a, get a chip, get a map card chip. If you don't, that's fine. So the first thing I want to talk about is anytime that if you're just a regular fisherman that you go out on the weekend or you fish a lot of tournaments like I do, you want to do map reconnaissance by utilizing what I just talked about. If you know you're going to launch at, um, let's say I'm going to use Sam Rayburn here as an example from that's just down the road from me. If I'm going to launch at Public Ramp or Umphrey's Pavilion and I want to, want to go fish uh, you know, the east arm of the lake, well, I can look at my map card and I can start you know, on my graph or on a hard map or navionics.com for free. And I can kind of plan out where I want to fish for the day. And I can look at all those features offshore. Now, offshore, ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, you know, kids, look, offshore could be, you know, you might be 50 yards off the shore. You might be 40 yards off the shore, casting out at something that is not visible on shore. That is offshore. Everybody gets everything mixed up thinking that offshore is out there in the middle of the lake, 50 foot deep. It can be, yes. But what I'm going to get ready to insert in just a second, you're, I want you to look at your map and we're going to determine where you want to fish. So you want to look for things like Hard breaks, okay, different contour changes, different depth changes, channel swings. Is there timber in the area, okay? And you want to take into account what type of season it is. It doesn't make much sense if it's springtime to be out just in the middle of the lake whenever they're already past pre-spawn and all the bass are spawning, okay? So since we're talking about summertime, that's what I'm going to talk about how to locate those spots offshore for summertime, okay? And it can apply during the winter too and pre-spawn, and we'll dive into that here in a second. But right now, I'm going to show you some key areas if I was going to a lake that I would want to stop and idle with my electronics offshore. So right here, I'm going to insert some pictures. I'm going to circle things in red for you all to see. That way you can see what we're focusing on, okay? So I'm going to insert them right here. Okay, now that you all can see what we're talking about, about the, the drop-offs, what a ledge would be, a channel swing, okay? I want you to understand that bass may not always just be on that specific spot. So, um, it, during the summertime, it really depends on your patterns for offshore fishing. We know that when the, in the summertime, they're feeding on different types of forage, meaning they're feeding on more bluegill, frogs, shad. Shad's almost a whole year-round thing. It really is. Any type of bait fish forage. Um, crawdads, but during the summertime, they're really focusing on bluegill crappie 
And when you're offshore, they're focusing heavily on gizzard shad or threadfin shad, okay? So don't get discouraged if you pick an area on the map and you idle by and you don't see anything, okay? The first thing is when you're offshore fishing is be patient and be ready to spend a lot of time behind your graph and a lot less time fishing. But it's very rewarding when you do put that time in and you find a giant massive off, offshore school, summer school, you can really just go to town on them, okay? So when you're idling out there, just remember, think about the water being drained out of the lake. It's a desert out there, okay? Think about looking at the Grand Canyons and the dips and dives. That's what's underwater out there. A lot of people don't get offshore because they liked their visual fishermen or fishing women. They like to see the type of structure with their eyes, what they're fishing. So they go down the bank, but I want, here's really important. How many times do you all go down the bank and then you've gone about 150, 200 yards and all of a sudden, you know, you, you, you've never caught anything in that whole stretch, but you come to a very small section, 25 yards, maybe even 30 yards. You're just slamming fish on the bank. There's a reason why. It might be deeper there. It might be shaded from the sun. The bait fish might stack up in there because there's a little ditch that's shallow or there's vegetation, okay? Same thing offshore, okay? You might find a, one of those ledges, okay? And you might go 100 yards down that ledge and all of a sudden it, it, you just come to a spot and it's loaded, okay? There's a reason why it's loaded and you need to understand why it's loaded because it'll help you go and develop a pattern on the rest of the lake, it could be because there's a brush pile there. It could be that, you know, maybe it transitions from, you know, like pea gravel rock to chunk rock. Okay, bass like transitions. And that's a whole separate video in itself. There could be where that's where the channel swing turns the hardest. And, you know, we know that forage wise that the bass are feeding on are shad, crappie, bluegill. That might be a spot where the shad gather or your, your uh, bait fish and they go past there and bass will sit there and ambush them, okay? So those spots that I showed you, what you wanna do is you want to utilize your side imaging. You want to go past that point with your side imaging. And I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna draw some lines on what it would look like right here if you were to idle this. I'm gonna show you how I would do it right here. I'm gonna show you a picture. Okay, as you can see, you make the, you go down a stretch and you make a turn and you come back up. Think about laying like a spaghetti noodle just up and down like a wave, okay? Like some kind of a sound wave, all right? Frequency, if you will. That's how you want to idle it, okay? Now, typically when I'm searching for bass, I'll have my side imaging between 80 to 100 feet out. Now, remember, the further you get out with your side imaging, okay, you're making a bigger picture, all right, and it's gonna be a little harder to see those bass. Bass look like little peanuts on your side imaging. Little bitty peanuts, and, and, and the bigger they are, the better they're gonna show up, obviously. But there's also a way to distinguish whether it's a bass or a carp or it's a gar or a drum. Drum is the number one thing people are like, Chad, is this fish? I get a lot of questions about offshore all the time on my fishing stuff. Chad, is this fish? Well, no, that's drum. Or like they know him down here in Texas, goo, okay? Drum set up like bass do. But what's really important about bass is they're all competitive in nature. And they like to have their own space, specifically big bass. Bass, when they start getting up above six and seven pounds, you really, okay, so let me, let me back up. Let me say this. When you're, all, when you're fishing offshore and you see this massive wad out there, a lot of times they could be Kentucky bass or spots. But a lot of times it could be what we call marauders, which are two and three pounders. When you get up to that four and five pound range, you'll see less and less numbers. So you might have 25 two and three pounders together. You might only have 10 or 12 of the four and five pounders together. Now, when you get into that five, six, seven pound range, you're going to only start seeing about seven or eight of them together. When you get above really seven and a half and up, I've always noticed. Those bass, you're only going to find five, three to five dots in an area because bass like to have their own space. They will never be crowded up on your side image. And I tell you what, I'm going to insert a picture right here so you all can see what I'm talking about.
All right, now that you got a good look at what bass kind of look like, you've seen in one of the pictures that they were relating to a lay down out there, okay? And on that lay down, you know, that is a summertime style uh, pattern. They're, they're out there on a hard spot but they also have structure to relate to, to hide behind. Cause bass don't like, just think about it. Would you like to be out there in the middle of the ocean, just floating? No, you'd kind of want something that you could sit on and hang close to in order to kind of protect yourself or give yourself just, you know, a little bit more comfort. So bass do the same thing. So that's what bass look like on your side imaging. Okay. Now, whether you run the blue palette, you run the regular copper palette, whatever palette your graph offers. What is important is you see so many graph videos out there like, oh, hey, you know, I, this is the best thing to get out there and do. And there's they're catchy phrases that people click on. What's most important is whatever is comfortable to you, whatever looks best to you. You know, a lot of guys run that blue palette offshore during the summer and I I personally like to run the just regular standard tone for Hummingbird that when it comes out with it. Same way with Garmin on my live scope. It's that same standard color that everybody likes. It's the default color that it comes with. Okay. That's what's comfortable for me. And this is a separate topic, like I said, for settings. Okay. But your settings are going to differ on each color palette. Okay. But we're going to dive into that later. So we talked about the idle pattern. We talked about how you want to utilize your electronics by using those little S patterns up and down and up and down. Okay. And when you find fish offshore, okay, I want you to understand that driving over them with your down imaging is not the best thing to do. You can scatter a school offshore. You can spook them. And today, the big controversy is live scope. And now that Hummingbird's got this new live targeting come out and it's locking onto the fish, guys and girls, please understand that under the water that you're essentially shooting sonar. It's pinging. So your graph is pinging and giving you images. So side imaging, down imaging, 360. Every time it makes a sweep, it's pinging. And when that ping hits something, it comes back. That's how you get a picture. Live scope is a continuous scream underwater. It's continuous throwing frequencies out constantly and they're constantly coming back. So think about it like this. If you are outside and you're standing next to a generator and it's just constantly just whoa, just running loud noise. That's what those fish are hearing underwater from the sonar. They're hearing it ping. Okay. Think everybody's watched movies where they're in submarines and stuff and they send those loud loud pings off and it hits and it bounces back right and it can tell them the distance and all kinds of stuff that's what live scope does so live scope is a great tool when you're offshore but what what, am, what a, chad what are you what are you getting at with all of this well what i'm getting at is when you idle over fish directly over them and they're so pressured on your lake they will scatter okay you want to try and stay away from them so if I know that I'm idling at a ledge, I want to try to keep it about 80 feet away from me. And I'm going to idle past it, let's just say on my right side, okay? And then when I come back around, I'm going to just stay about 30, 30 feet off, 30 yards off, my 40 yards off my last S turn. So that way, you know, I when I'm coming back and it's going to be on my left this time, I'm a little bit closer. I'm 30 yards closer so I can just reach a little further to my left, further up on the ledge. Okay. When I locate my fish, the first thing I'm going to do is on a graph, I'm going to, I'm going to put it in neutral and I'm going to reach over on my hummingbird unit. I'm going to scroll over to where I see those fish on my side imaging. And it's going to have a little target icon and I'm going to hit mark right on them. Now the catch is during the summertime, they might move. So you might drop your live scope down or your 360 and realize that they moved about 50 yards over and you probably spook them or they're chasing forage. Okay. So when you locate the fish, that's how you do it on a hummingbird on Garmin and Lawrence, they've got these great features to where you can stop, pause your graph and you can scroll back in real time and go back and mark something. And I think that's an amazing thing to do because there's so many people out there these days that don't want to put the time in offshore and they see you out there doing it. And I can idle past something a long ways and then hit pause when I'm a hundred yards further down 
And when they see me hit pause, they think I found something out there and I can scroll back and I can mark it a hundred yards behind me what I want to fish. Okay. So that's a great feature that Garmin and Lawrence have that I'm not aware that Hummingbird has yet, at least in the Helix units that I have. So when I mark my fish, what I want to do is take in consideration how to set up now. Okay. You want to be able to turn around and you want to be able to either cast into the wind or if your lake has current, okay, if you have a ledge here, okay, and the current's coming over it like this, those bass are going to set up on just the back side of your ledge, okay? That way when the bait fish are going with the current and getting blown around under there, if you will, they can come over the top of that ledge and the bass going to run up and ambush and hammer them. If it's really windy and you have to face into the wind, okay, and cast, Sometimes that's not always the best thing because if the wind's blowing in your face and the ledge is out here, well, those bass not might be positioned on a ledge that's steep if the wind's blowing in this way, okay? They could be shallower to account for the current from the wind, or if you have a ridge, they might be on the back side of that now. And the wind, once again, blowing, creating current, instead of being on the front face of the ledge or right on top of it, they might just be off the backside. So when the, the current, the wind blown current pushes your bait over the top of it, they come up and ambush it. Okay. So setup is really important and you're just going to have to practice. Okay. You're going to have to practice and just get comfortable. The number one thing that makes us all better is our failures. Okay. I didn't go out there and just be, I don't consider myself a pro by any means or an offshore God. I've spent enough time doing it and I've spent enough time, you know, understanding and researching what everything looks like. So it brings me to my point right now. If you haven't hit subscribe right now in the, the bottom right hand corner of my video, this shows a little picture of me. You can click on it and, you, and it's going to bring up a subscribe button and you can subscribe right now to my video to get more tips and tricks to help you get better at offshore fishing and catch a true giant this summer. That's how I learned how to do a lot of this and watching Bassmaster Live and Bassmaster, you know, elites or MLF watching how these guys do stuff and learning from it. So if you found everything useful today, that brings me to the point of my video where we're going to stop today and we're going to dive more into the next video on part two. And part two is going to cover more about the setup and how to throw to the fish. Part three for everybody that doesn't have all the electronics, it's going to cover on how to utilize your hard copy map and utilize reference points on the lake to set yourself up. So if this helped out everybody, guys, girls, men, women, please hit subscribe and turn the notification bell on. It truly helps me grow. Um, you see the American flag hanging behind me here. I am a veteran. Um, I don't want any thanks for service or pat on the back. I volunteered to do it and I love to fish. And what I started my YouTube channel for and my Facebook page, which is Average Fisherman, hashtag Chad Marler on Facebook. I put this, I wanna put this stuff up to help you all go out and learn how to catch fish offshore. I want to put tips and tricks and just keep it real with you all. You're gonna find on my content that I'm gonna keep it real with everybody. I'm gonna be blunt and I'm always gonna tell you the truth. It's just, that's how we help each other get better at fishing. If I have all this knowledge and I don't pass it on to somebody, well, I'm not doing a very good job then because knowledge is important. And the only way it's important is if we share it to everybody else. So that's going to end this video for today. I thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. If you could hit subscribe once again, I thank you all so much. And if you want to catch me over on Facebook, I put a lot of my daily content up, pictures and what's going on on Lake Sam Rayburn that I live close to. I put that on my Facebook page. It's Average Fisherman, hashtag Chad Marler, just like you see on YouTube here. I thank you all so much. And on the next video, we're going to be talking about how to set up and how to truly catch that giant while you're out there cranking or dragging. Until next time, everybody, Marler out.